Hey everybody, my name is Chaz Strickland. I am here with my spiritual daughter, Elisa. I'm so excited to be here with her. Um, we're going to be talking about a topic that so many don't really want to discuss tonight. Um, we believe it's going to be powerful and it's going to be a tremendous blessing to so many people. And it's going to be helping people that are believers and they may be um, having struggling, struggles with the LGBT community in that community, people that have gone through that lifestyle. If that's you, I want you to invite somebody on here. Um, it's going to be so powerful. Um, so as you're coming on, Please write to us. Let us know where you're coming from. Um, and also, if you could share this for us, like and share it. Invite as many people as you can. It is going to be powerful tonight. I believe that we're really going to do a lot of ministry and just see tremendous breakthrough tonight. So we'll give everyone a few minutes just to share the broadcast. Um, and we will also um, be looking at the comments. I see my wife on here. Yes. I see many of my sons and daughters that are jumping onto the live right now. Um, I love you all. Special shout out to my wife. Um, and we, we're just excited. Um, in, in a brief moment, um, we are going to open this up and it is going to be a powerful discussion. Um, I have with me my spiritual daughter, Elisa Robertson. And I'm telling you guys, it is going to be so powerful tonight. It is going to be so powerful tonight. God is about to move. And I'm telling you guys, people's lives are about to be changed. People that are not able to receive ministry um, at times when they're in church, because this is such a controversial discussion, you are going to be able to receive ministry tonight. Um, so we're so excited. So let me pray for you as you're coming in. Father, it's in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this broadcast. I thank you for the fire of the Holy Ghost being released to every single person that watches this. We take authority over this social media platform. And I thank you, Father, that you would release your power to every person that would watch tonight. I thank you that people's lives will be changed forever. I thank you, Father, that you said in your word that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so, Father, I thank you that as her testimony is released, that people would be set free from the powers of hell, that prison doors would open right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that as people hear, Father, the wisdom, the things that will be spoken tonight, I pray that by the power of the blood of Jesus, that people would begin to experience deliverance wherever they are, over the airways, as they watch, as they're in their cars, as they are at home, I pray that the power of God would visit you, that the angel of the Lord would visit you, the angel of the Lord's deliverance in Jesus' name. So once again, I have with me my spiritual daughter. I am so excited to be sitting here with her. We talked about this. We are just ready. So once again, if you could share this broadcast, somebody's going to be blessed by this tonight. So real quick, I just want to say, daughter, um, if you could introduce and let the people know something about yourself. Well, hi everyone. My name is Elisa Robertson. I'm originally from Philadelphia, but I do reside here in Jacksonville, Florida under the Ignite Ministry. And this is just a topic very dear to my heart. Many people know that I was living an alternative lifestyle of homosexuality for almost 15 years. And a lot of people don't think that is something that you can have deliverance from. A lot of people feel that you are born that way. And there are things scriptural wise that refer to generational curses and things like that, that does make that a true statement, but that does not have to be the end statement. And I'm here just to share parts of my testimony to let someone know that is struggling with homosexuality, someone that is wanting to leave that lifestyle but don't know where to go, feel that they may be too far in and things of that nature to know that God can pull you out of any area in your life and pull you into a place that he wants you to be in. Wow. So once again, um, she's tagged on this broadcast. And so if you need encouragement, um, if that's something that you have gone through, um, I would like you guys to follow her Facebook page. Um, she's also on Instagram. Um, and, and what's your Instagram name, daughter? 
Oh, Mrs. Real Robertson. And so please um, follow her on there as well. Um, and, and so I want to start off by asking um, this question, um, daughter. When was it that you first began to experience um, maybe thoughts um, about being a lesbian um, or was there like a traumatic experience? What what would you say was the beginning of the, that lifestyle for you? Um, for me, it was around the age of 13. And that was a time where I just was kind of trying to find my identity, realize who I was. I just got freedoms to kind of be able to go places by myself, like the mall. At that age, back in those times, that was a really big thing. And I remember coming in contact with a girl and I told one of my best friends, oh, she's just so pretty. Mm. And I thought it was weird that I thought that, but my friend told me, oh, you're a girl. It's okay for girls to say other girls are pretty. You don't have anything to worry about. And that kind of uh. was the introduction to it. And the door really began to swing open when I was 15. I was in high school and a girl that I was in class with, we were paired up in science a lot. And she mm. was actually considered herself bisexual then. Wow. And she began to share different things with me. And I just began to ask questions like I do with every area of my life or different topics. When I hear something new, I'm always very inquisitive. And the more questions I began to ask, the more I kind of was pulled in to that lifestyle. And once that lifestyle was introduced to me, it seemed to be everywhere. Everywhere I turn, everywhere I would go, every person I would meet, the doorway was open until I kind of just walked completely through it. Wow. Now, now when you began to experience that, um, many times it's easy for someone that did not experience that lifestyle to begin to uh, say what it's like or this is how you should be. Um, do you feel that you went through things as far as the church? Um, do you feel that the church was effective in ministering to you? And if you do feel or if you don't feel, what do you feel the church could have done better to minister to someone that's going through that in that lifestyle? Well, I feel both ways about it. There were positive things and negative things. Um, I would say that for my personal experience, the church dropped the ball on me because even though I was in that lifestyle, I always, well, for the most part, I dressed like this. I was always very feminine. So no one ever looked at me in that way or mm -hmm. no one ever said anything to me or I was given kind of more grace in that area wow. versus someone who has more masculinity, someone who dresses more so like a male. I remember going to a church service and I was attending the church every week. Mm -hmm. No, the pastor never said anything. Um, one day I brought some of my friends and they dressed like boys. And then wow. the pastor had a revelation to pray for lesbianism. But that was something I was dealing with, something I was struggling with that nobody ever came to assist me in that area. Mm. And then it's because of my outward appearance, it wasn't really taken seriously. So wow. no one would try to minister to me in that area because in their mind, it might be just a phase or I wasn't as gay as someone who didn't look like me. Wow. Wow. Y'all, I hope you guys are really listening to this. I believe that this is going to help us um, in ministering to people that have gone through this particular lifestyle. So you felt like you, you guys were strategically picked out mm -hmm. um, because you guys had came together. Um, now, while going through that, what would you say, what made you go to church at that time? Did you were, did you ever have any thoughts that what I'm the lifestyle I'm living is wrong or were you were did you believe that this is okay? I never during that time of my life, I never really thought it was wrong because no one ever talked about it. Mm. No one ever preached against it. It was kind of like an elephant in the room, mm. but never acknowledged because again, I don't look like my sin. Wow. Now, what made me go to church, there was always something on the inside of me that tugged on me. 
around the same time, actually, being 15, 16, I had a friend in high school. Her name was Erica, and she was very much in the church. Mm -hmm. And she was the one who always, you know, you should come to church. You should invite me. She never judged me. She never treated me differently. She was became one of my best friends. And wow. she is the one who kind of introduced me to God. Oh, come to church, you know. And that opened a doorway mm. for that. When I decided to leave homosexuality because it wasn't really addressed in church, mm. that was something that I kind of almost had to do on my own. Wow. Wow. That's, to me, this is, I mean, it's amazing. Now, so you said that it was 15 years mm -hmm. uh, that you were in that lifestyle. Um, now, what was your transition out of that lifestyle like? And because that's a long time to be <laughs> in that lifestyle. The transition was extremely hard. It was hard because I did not have a support system Everyone around me knew me for so long, knew that I was living that lifestyle. When I wanted to come out, it wasn't really taken seriously. Mm. To them, like from wow. one perspective, when people come out and say that they're gay, parents, people, they'll say, oh, it's just a phase you're going through. Mm. Like when people go to college and different things like that. So when I decided to leave that lifestyle, People were telling me, oh, it's just a phase. You're not that serious. Nobody really encouraged me to leave it. Mm. But that makes sense because everyone around me lived that lifestyle. So wow. to them, this is life. Um, once you're in, you're kind of in. It's almost like a gang initiation. Mm. Like they kind of say like, well, you have to die out. That's how homosexuality is looked at for the most part. Wow. A lot of people that kind of leave, they never really talk about their past. It's kind of like a new life. They kind of forget it. But a lot of people stay in it because you feel like this is who you are. Mm. You've been in it so long, you don't know how to live out. There are a lot of things that I had to learn, even wow. as a feminine female, how to carry myself, how to talk, how to interact with males, how to interact with females, mm. how to live a heterosexual life. Like my soul literally had to be retrained. Mm. So so it wasn't just deliverance mm -hmm. that you needed. There was a process of your soul being trained. Because I, I, I know a lot of individuals who um, have come to our ministry um, and we, we walk with them through life. And some of them lived in that lifestyle. They are completely free from any spirit that leads them into that lifestyle. However, we still see those mannerisms like in the men or in the women. Um, and so many people believe that they're still bound in that spirit if they see like certain mannerisms. Would you say that that's true or that's false? I think it is false. Mm. Uh, me personally, you have to be intentional mm. about everything. Uh, wow. When people see deliverance, they think it's a snap of the finger. I remember when I decided, okay, I'm not gonna live like this. God mm -hmm. really began to tug on me when I was at a previous ministry and I began to serve more um, under the youth pastor. And I was responsible for wow. the teenage girls looking up to me. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I thought to myself, I can't live a secret life because one of them will potentially see me out there. And how can I pour into them and tell them one thing and I'm living a certain way outside of here? Mm. So I decided, okay, step by step, every area of my life that wasn't conducive to who God called me to be, I had to change. And the biggest thing in my life at that time was homosexuality. And when I began that process, it took almost three years mm. for me to make intentional decisions. I had to, you know, unfortunately, I had to lose a lot of friends, which mm. wow. people are scared of doing. I had to lose a lot of relationships. Wow. I had to not do the things that I did for entertainment because those things always would have wow. connected me to that lifestyle. Wow. Now, now, would you say that was a very difficult thing? I mean, because 15 years, you build a lot of relationships. 
Um, were you, did you experience backlash from anyone that was a part of that community as you were exiting out? I did. Um, I got a lot of people that told me that I wasn't genuine, that I was fake. And these are people that I have friendships with for 10 plus years. Mm. I lost a lot of friends that even though I moved to Florida, people that I knew from Philadelphia, they didn't talk to me anymore. Um, a lot of people turned their back on me. The mm. people that said that they were by my side would stand with me. And it was because we no longer agreed on one topic. It's interesting because if I was to come out and say, you know, like, oh, I'm gay. Everyone would tell me how proud they are of me, how wow. brave I am. You have our support. Mm. You know, people will wear little rainbows, um, which I find interesting itself that that is the symbol for pride when God originally used that for symbolization. But that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, yeah. But when I came out and said, oh, I'm not gay, I'm, I'm actually straight. People were like, well, what about this? And what about that? Mm. I was constantly reminded of my past. And it kind of makes you feel like you're in quicksand, like you want to move forward. But people are always trying to remind you, oh, that's not who you are. This is who you are. Stop pretending. Well, what if I was pretending and I was lost for 10, 15 years? Mm. What if I now realize this is who I am? Mm. It's just like when you're a child, you can play school and you can pretend to be a teacher at four, but you're not really a teacher. Wow. There comes a time where you have to actually mature and be who you actually are. This is this is so good. Um, as people are coming on, uh, once again, I want to encourage you, please like and share this. I really believe that this is helping so many people, you know, as they're listening. Um, I wanted to ask you, too, in your transition, one of the things that stands out to me about your transition is that you also got married. You're mm -hmm. talking about also becoming a mother w within a heterosexual relationship. You're, so would you were there any challenges Coming out of that lifestyle, you come out of that lifestyle after 15 years, you come into the saving power of Jesus Christ, and you get married, and now you're you're a wife, you're a, you're a mother. I mean, w would you say there were any challenges in that? Was there ever a time where you you felt difficulties in that, or was it a pretty easy transition because of the fact that you had came out before you got married? It was a little of both. I would say it was easy because of the time that I met my husband. Because mm. of that three-year span where a lot of stuff was purged already out of my life. Wow. It was a little easier. Uh, but it was still difficult because for so long in relationships, I got used to my interaction with females. Mm. You can't treat a man and a woman the same way wow. because they're completely different. <laughs> so that was a lot of stuff that in my marriage where we kind of struggled in the beginning because when I lived an alternative lifestyle, not only was the lifestyle alternative, my position in the relationship was also alternative. So wow. I'm, I naturally have a dominant personality, so I naturally assume that role. But coming into a marriage where I do have to, even though we're together, I technically you know, are under my husband, that took a lot on me. Wow. So I constantly was trying to be dominant. And my husband, he had to sh tell me all the time, like, you don't have to be so strong. You don't mm. have to do that, you're safe here, you can relax, you can be loved on, you can be the woman that you were designed to be. You don't have to be the man and the woman, which the world will try to make you feel like, as a woman, wow. that's who you are. This, this is so, so powerful. I never really thought about the concept of how even within that um, type of relationship, your roles are warped, they're perverted. Definitely. Um, now, now, would you say that, so when someone's in the world and they have relations with someone outside of marriage, it creates a soul tie. Do you feel like there was something distinct about soul ties within the same sex? Um, what was that? Like, what was that? I, I don't really know how to ask this question. Do you feel that there's a difference 
Uh, do you feel like there's a, a much stronger need of deliverance? Or do you feel like the deliverance is different from that perspective? I feel like it is a lot more deliverance that's needed in that area. I can't speak for anybody else's story, but I could say mine. I had a very promiscuous past. And from my experience from being a heterosexual back then, you know, people people did what they did. But in the LGBT, I feel like there is a lot more promiscuity. People are, are a lot quicker to be intimate with each other. People are in and out of relationships. I know a lot of, we could be in a group of, let's say 10 people. Out of the 10 people, there's at least five relationships. Mm. And in those five relationships, there could be other relationships. Like everything overlapped. It's a very small community, even though the world will make it seem like the number is really, really large. Mm -hmm. It's really not. There is honestly a small number of homosexuals but the community because of that is so small it's very very intertwined wow so i feel like there were a lot of soul ties that i had and because it's already i um, can't think of a proper word i want to use but for example let's say i was in a relationship with someone this is my friend but because of the lifestyle, even the friendship line is blended. Mm. So there are soul ties that you can have with people that you don't even have to be intimate with mm. because everything is so blurred because everything is kind of perverted. Wow. I see. Um, now, did you feel like um, within that community that there is a lot of promiscuity in, within that community? I've always noticed that whenever um, I administer deliverance, um, and it tends to be people who have been in that lifestyle, not isolating them because promiscuity is something that exactly. our generation is just receiving bodies from because we've normalized sex. We've normalized sex outside of marriage in general. Mm -hmm. um, but would you do you believe that that's something that's very dominant within that community? Or, or were there individuals that are in that community, but they weren't really sexually active? the longer they were in it? I'd say it's a lot of promiscuity. Okay. And I think also because, all right, for example, I remember when I was about 16, um, someone asked me like, why are you gay? And I, my answer was because I can be. Mm. And I began to, there was a time period where I didn't care if I was talking to a male or a female, because I was just filled with so much lust. And the world will look at you and guys will tell you, oh, it's okay, because they think that's attractive. Mm -hmm. So that in itself allows females to be very promiscuous. Mm -hmm. Then males, there, you know, there are a lot of guys on the down low. So that causes a lot of promiscuity there. There are a lot of closet cases. There are a lot of people that do things out of curiosity. Mm. So there are so many like underneath closed doors and hidden pockets where all of those soul ties, all of that lust, all of that promiscuity is coming together and nobody really acknowledges it. Because on the surface, wow. you've been dating one person for a year, but mm. you're not thinking about the 10 people you've been with on the low. This, this is, wow. I mean, I'm really, I'm learning a lot, you know, today. Um, there, there's so many questions uh, that come to mind, you know. Um, do, is that with, when you, so it, within that community, did you see a lot of people who had been molested? I've noticed as I've done deliverance that many times, not every time, but many times that I'm ministering to someone that's coming out of that and that wants freedom from that, that they have been molested. Um, either once or multiple times, and it's oftentimes in childhood. Is there a connection there? Um, and if there's not, um, like I said, it definitely isn't a problem. If there's not, it's just something that I personally noticed. Um, I think there's a connection a little bit. Mm -hmm. The reason I say a little bit is because I can see it from both perspectives, from mm -hmm. homosexual and heterosexual, where a lot of people in general 
I think just in this time period, have gone through molestation. Um, as someone who was molested, it's a part of you, especially when it happened young, mm. where you you don't ever want to feel that vulnerable again. You don't ever want to be in a position where someone else has control. So wow. it's weird where the enemy will use that. And in your mind, you're taking control over yourself. You're being in a position where you're not being taken advantage of. But in that, you lose yourself because you're still doing things that normally you wouldn't have if you mm. weren't in that mindset. Wow. Wow. This is this is just unbelievable. Um, now, oftentimes this raises a crisis within family. Um, and with that said, what do you feel parents can do? If, if there's probably parents on here listening and maybe they have a child who has recently come out and said that I'm in this lifestyle, or they're suspicious that they may be, what can parents do to, um, to, to bless their child? What could we do better as parents? Because I've heard the horror stories of a dad that just basically turns his back on his son, or yeah. the mom who says, you have to get out of my house right now. What could be done better in your opinion? What can be done better is open communication. I think one of the dr balls are dropped because parents are waiting too long to get involved. Mm. You know, I love my mother, uh, but my mother was a young mom. She was a single mother at one point. So she had so much she had to do. And I have younger siblings where her attention wasn't on me in a way that it could have been. So mm -hmm. I was I was lost. And by the time my mom realized that I was in an alternative lifestyle, it was too late. Mm -hmm. I was already there. There was nothing she could have done at that point but to love me, but to know that I could come to her. Mm -hmm. I think that parents need to keep that line of communication open you know, my kids are young, but I talk to um, my daughter all the time. I make sure, like, listen, we don't have any secrets. Anything you want to say, you can tell me. Wow. I make sure, and sometimes children are uncomfortable with their parents. I make sure my sister, my brother are involved in my children's life. So if mm. you don't feel comfortable to me, you can tell them. That way I know they can tell me. Wow. That's and good. they can, you know, be able to minister to them because mm. people just, no matter how close of a relationship you have with your mom or dad, it's just weird telling them some things. So wow. I keep that open. That's that's really good. I, I think that advice is phenomenal, you know, for parents to know, to be encouraged. Um, and once again, um, we have a ex-lesbian here, um, 15 years. And so... Any parent that you're you're praying for your child, you're praying for them, there is hope. Um, and you can love them in the process. Um, it, um, and so just because they choose uh, the lifestyle of homosexuality um, does not mean that you cannot love them. It does not mean that the way that you feel about them has to change. Um, which leads me to uh, our title um, of, of this particular broadcast. And this is probably one of the most controversial questions um, that I believe need to be discussed. Um, and I, I have my theology, uh, and I'll, I'll follow up uh, after you, but I, I wanna ask you, do you believe that a person can be born lesbian or homosexual? I would say yes. The reason I say yes is because in scripture it talks about how we're born in a sin. You mm. also, know about generational curses. Me specifically, like I mentioned, when I was 15 years old, I met the the girl, don't wanna say her name. Um, I met her and she began to talk to me about her girlfriend, which intrigued me. Now, simultaneously at that time, I met my biological father. Mm. Um, when I met him, we met in a public place, just in case he was crazy. <laughs> and the first thing I said to him when he sat down at the table was, 
before you try to get to know me, just know this, I'm gay. And he said, oh, half your family is. Mm. So in my spirit, that was a confirmation. Like, Because my mom's side of the family, they were like, you know, I'm kind of tripping. But when I met him, he's like, oh, well, your auntie so-and-so and your cousin so-and-so, they're like this and this person's gang and this person's bi. And I'm like, oh, I found my people. Wow. No wonder I felt like a black sheep all those years. Mm. I, I'm I'm in the place. And then when I met them, I'm like, wow, we look alike. We act alike down to crazy things like our nail length, our color of our hair. And I'm like, this wow. is it. And, it. and to me at that age, it was like confirmation. Mm. So I'm like, it made sense. I was born this way. But the enemy used that timeline to line everything up mm. it was like okay this look this is a common thing because there are people your age like this okay this is your social life mm. now look it is a common thing because look at your family you guys are wow. all like this it makes sense so it's like oh i was born this way couldn't nobody tell me anything i would even you and this kind of takes back to um, where the church dropped the ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. I would even use things in the scripture to justify things. Mm -hmm. I would say things like, "Well, you know, God isn't mad at me for being gay. He's mad at me be for fornication mm -hmm. because I'm doing things for pleasure, not for reproduction wow. and things like that." And because the church wasn't properly prepared, they didn't know how to combat that. Mm. So that, me saying that would shut 90% of people down. Wow. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm right, because I'm giving them information. They're not saying anything back. They don't have an answer. They can't tell me I'm wrong. And now I feel like I have confirmation and all these sides. If you tell people that you are gay, no one tells you that you're wrong. And I think that's the problem where people wow. have gotten so waxed in their communication, afraid of conflict, especially in certain areas. You know, I'm from Philly, we say how we feel. But mm -hmm. somewhere down here with the Southern Comfort, everything is just kind of smile and nodded about. Mm -hmm. When as believers, we have to be bold enough to say, "I that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to disagree. It's okay that I don't agree with you. Wow. And that's all right. Wow. Now, now this takes me back. I, I believe we're, we're starting to see a redefinition of love in our generation. Um, mm -hmm. And a, a picture has been painted more and more that if you disagree that about the homosexual lifestyle, that this instantly means that you hate people. What would you say to someone who would watch this later or maybe they're on right now and they're in that lifestyle and someone disagrees with them, what would your encouragement be to them? My encouragement would be apply that same thought process to a different area in your life. If you were out with your friends and it was, I'm hungry, where do you want to go? I want to go to McDonald's. Somebody wants to go to Burger King. You want to eat at two different places, but does that mean that you hate the other place? No. A lot of times, um, as believers, when we disagree with homosexuality, we're labeled as homophobic. I don't have a fear of homosexuality. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with it. There are wow. a lot of things that I don't agree with. If my daughter wanted to run around with scissors, I don't agree with that. I have my reasons, and she understands them. People have to be in a place where they understand it is okay to disagree that speaks to our individuality. Mm -hmm. We're all different. At no two people are exactly the same. Even mm -hmm. identical twins still have differences in them. Mm -hmm. That's why they're twins and not the same person. So I encourage people, me specifically, you can ask anybody I know. I, I haven't treated anyone different. Mm -hmm. I love everybody. Why? Because just because you're at a certain place now, that does not mean that is who you are. Mm -hmm. Everybody is an ex-somebody, and it is okay to no longer be in the place that you are at. It is okay to move forward. It is okay to lose people. It's okay to 
reinvent yourself. It's okay to be bold about your faith. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people are scared of what is somebody going to say? What is somebody going to think? How is somebody going to feel? Everybody's going to say something, think something, feel something. Mm. You have to be in a position where you care more about yourself. You care more about how you feel and how you think about yourself. Some people are comfortable in their homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Some people are not. And it's okay that when you're ready to leave that lifestyle, that you have the freedom to leave. This is so good. Now, now daughter, I want to ask you, if, if, if someone is in that lifestyle, um, and they they believe in Jesus, but they do not repent. Do you believe that they will be a part of the kingdom of God? That that when Jesus returns, or if they were to pass away, and they were active in that lifestyle, and they go and may, and they stand before God, do you believe that they will go to heaven? I was asked that question before. And my answer was, why would you risk it? Mm. Why would you risk it if you believe in Jesus and you know, when you really think about everything that he did just so we didn't have to? A lot of times people think that because we don't agree with homosexuality, we're trying to condemn people to hell. And that's not true. Mm -hmm. If you pay attention to scripture, we're kind of like already on our way. And it's because of what Jesus did that we're going to be saved. Mm -hmm. It's because of what he did that we have grace. We can be forgiven. Repent. It's okay. Repentance is not a bad thing. People think of repentance as just accountability. Hey, that's what grace is for. That's why we were forgiven. That's what the cross was for. That's what the blood of Christ was for. Like Jesus literally went to hell just so we didn't have to. Why risk it? You can't pick and choose what you want from scripture because this makes me feel comfortable. I'll take a little bit of that. I'll take a little bit of that. The Bible isn't like a cookbook or a recipe mm -hmm. where you can just add a little bit of this and add a little bit of that. It's literally a guide of how we should live our lives. Examples of people that came before us mm -hmm. that encountered the very things that we're encountering. It may not be the same way, but there's always a reference of how you can endure and overcome something. Wow. So to somebody who thinks, okay, I love Jesus. If you love Jesus and scripture tells us, and I'm talking about the scripture that was printed before 1946, mm -hmm. not new age, progressive, progressive yes. Christian scripture that's printed now where scriptures are removed. I'm saying, and it tells you, listen, that's wrong. Why risk it? Mm -hmm. Why just try to make it in why not just devote your life tomorrow isn't promised mm -hmm. i'd rather repent now and lose a couple of friends than something happens and unfortunately i'm going too soon and now i'm in hell hell isn't a party wow. it's not going to be fun you don't get used to the torture like people have to really read their bibles and understand things in their context and not just take the word that they hear on like a 10 second video mm. for life wow and, and you guys are hearing the wisdom that's flowing out of her mouth um, once again she is tagged on this broadcast i want you guys to um, like and follow her page also her husband myron um, please follow him you probably have saw him in the comments <laughs> he is cheering on <laughs> his wife um, and i i absolutely love that um, and I think that's even a picture, that's a powerful picture because to, to not just come out of the lifestyle, but to be restored fully into your femininity and, and to embrace um, being a wife and a mother and just the full context of family mm. is such an amazing thing. Um, wow. I, honestly, I'm, I'm just soaking this all in. Um, it's, it's so powerful. And I, it is an area that the church has not uh, been successful in. Um, in reaching, um, and, and this has caused people, some people that have actually wanted um, to come to Christ to be rejected. Um, and I, I will say that sometimes homosexuality is treated differently than other sins in the church. Um, here at Ignite, 
we preach against everything the same, yes. you know, so there's not like a specific thing that I target that I don't target. Um, and we preach here about the grace of God that um, Paul said that where sin is, grace abides in more abundance. But should we continue to sin so that grace can abound? He said, God forbid it. And so essentially what he's saying is the purpose of grace is not covering sin. Yeah. The purpose of grace is that when grace is released, God's grace empowers us to overcome the area that we have sin in. And so I want—I just want to encourage everybody, whatever our sin is, there's people on here listening that it's not even homosexuality. Your sin is that that you're, you're bound in some form of sexual sin. Maybe you've been bound in pornography. You've been bound in lust of the eyes, different areas of sin that you've been struggling. The the, the grace of God, God can release a grace on you that can empower you to be strengthened, to come out of that area where you've fallen or you've been tempted, where you've struggled with for years. It does not matter how long you've been wrestling and struggling um, with that particular sin, with that particular bondage, the grace of God right now on this live, God is empowering people to come out. He's empowering you to come out yeah. of bondage. He's empowering you to come out of that prison. He's encountering you. He's, he's releasing the grace of God that's going to give you the ability. His grace is sufficient for us. His power is made perfect in your weakness. Whatever your weakness is, whatever area that you've been bound by even demons in, there is a grace that can be released on you where you can overcome the temptations of the enemy. So while we're here, because I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit, to bring deliverance to people. We, people have heard um, the things that have been discussed tonight, but I also believe that the fire of God is here tonight yes. um, to, to, to help you to come into a place of deliverance, to come into a place of freedom. Maybe you had a traumatic experience. You were molested. Maybe you, you need a soul tie to be broken so that you can fully exit out of that lifestyle. God is about to release a grace right now. He's about to release deliverance. And so, daughter, I want to ask you, um, anything that you feel in your spirit um, to, to pray deliverance over the people that are, that are watching, the people that will watch in the future, let's take a moment to pray for them. Okay, so right now, God, uh, I just ask that you open the minds of your people, those people that are wanting to be free from certain sins, those people that are feeling like they have no place to go, those people that are wondering what is next, how do they overcome, Father God? I pray that your grace just falls upon them, Father God. Let the fire of your all-consuming hand just fall fresh upon them, God. Let deliverance manifest right where they are, God, where they begin to be free from yes, those Jesus. things that have been holding them down, where they begin to be free from those mindsets, from the people around them that are causing them to be in a place that will drag them to hell, Father God. Right now, let the blood of Christ just fall upon them, fall upon their yes. minds, upon their eyes, upon their ears, upon their hands, Father God. Let them be covered in the blood of Christ, Lord. Let them be in a place where they no longer feel that where they are is where they have to be, God. I pray, Lord, that you not only touch them, God, that you pull them out of the place that they're at, Father God, that you begin to catapult these people into a place and a lifestyle that is conducive to who they are called to be, God. Right now, I just bless each and every individual that is on this live, those that will watch the live, Father God. We just pray, God, that right now, even those that are um, in a place where the sin isn't holding them down, but maybe they're backslidden, Father God, or maybe they're feeling just the demonic pressures, God. I pray, Lord, that you just touch them. Not only do you touch them, God, but you place... Uh, we place right now, excuse me, a hedge of protection yes. around them, God. For I know that when Shed people are trying to come out of sin, shanta. God, when they're trying to come out of a lifestyle that has them bound, that the enemy will try mm. everything. So right now, Lord, we cast Thank down you, the plans of hell back to where they came from, Shibra Father God. We close Shibra doors, Shibra. God. We close windows, every entrance way, Father Shibra God, that will cause Baka. your people to be stagnant, yes. that will cause your people to even be in a place of slumber. Yes, concerning Jesus. the things of God. Lord, let the fire of God fall yes. upon them. Let rivers fire. of living water begin fire. to flow out of their bellies, Father God. Fire. Let them be in a place, God, where they Shanta begin to have the boldness of Christ in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just bless them in Jesus' name. Listen, 
I, I am so, I, I could feel the fire of God right now. And I pray that every person that would watch this, that you would feel this same fire uh, that we feel right now. That no matter when you watch this in the future, that you would feel the fire of God and that you would feel the love of God, yes. even as you are sitting and watching and listening. Also, you and your husband, you authored a book. You are at the finishing stages of this book. Um, yes. And I believe that many of the people that are watching this, um, it, it would be great for you to also read this book once it is published and released. Um, can you give them um, just some, some details of the book or something that would let them know what's yeah. inside the pages? <laughs> so our book is called Breaking the Silence. Uh, my husband and I, for those of you that do currently follow us, we attempted to release it, but it has been such warfare to get this book out. Everything from publishing to the uh, uh, illustrations to just everything that could happen has attempted to happen. So I know it is really going to bless some people. It dives deep into the topics that we talked about this evening and more. It's testimonies, personal testimonies from myself, personal testimonies from my husband about how we both were entangled in an alternative lifestyle and how God not only delivered us, he set us free, he brought us out, he connected us together, and we even have fruit from that. We have a wonderful marriage that the enemy would have loved to see it stop. We have two beautiful children right now where the enemy um, even tried to say that I could not have children. Even something that happened with my husband when he was a child was told that he wouldn't be able to have children. Mm -hmm. And we see that the report of the Lord is always greater than anything that man can tell you. So I want you guys to keep a lookout for the book. It is finished. We're just waiting on a few technical things from some different points. And that book will be out soon. And it is going to help people see that there is a life after homosexuality. And just because you were in a place, you do not have to remain in that place, that God has such great things for everyone. Wow. This, this has been phenomenal. Once again, I want you guys to find her on social media. Um, and I want you guys to like, follow, um, and I really, she releases a lot of really strong content. Her husband, Myron, releases some really strong content. Um, there's just phenomenal. Um, they are a blessing um, to my wife and I. Um, they are spiritual sons and daughters. Um, and here at Ignite, also we want to encourage you, if you're anywhere in the area, I mean anywhere, um, our ministry does do personal deliverances. Um, and so, um, we will minister to your needs, um, your needs for deliverance. Um, we will minister to them. Also, one time a month, we hold Out by Fire. It is by far one of the most powerful, life-changing. Every single time we do it, my life has changed. Yeah. Um, and we do that uh, so that we can minister mass deliverance to God's people. But it, we are seeing some high-level deliverance within that. Um, and so if you are looking to break free from the hold of the enemy, or you, maybe you've never gone through deliverance before, I highly encourage you to come to Out by Fire. We'll be releasing more details on the next time that we'll be holding that gathering. Yes. But the last four times have been life-changing. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking life-changing. People that have come, they will tell you that I went to that meeting and my life was never the same. We've had leaders come receive impartation and now they left and they're going to their ministries and they're seeing an increase of miracle signs and wonders. Um, we're seeing people come in and be set free from all types of different spirits, all types of different bondages. You name it, we're, we're seeing people get delivered from sexual immorality. We're seeing people get delivered from, I mean, sickness and disease. We're seeing people get delivered. God is just doing so much um, here in Jacksonville. And so we want to invite you guys to the Ignite Church Revival Center. Um, and you can look us up on ignitejacks.com. And so if you take a look on there, you can see all the information of the ministry and what it is that we are doing as a ministry, our upcoming events. There's something special that's happening here. There is such a strong spirit of revival. I'm telling you guys, it has been life changing. So please um, take a look 
and come and be a part of those out by fires if you need deliverance or if you just happen to be in the area, you're just anywhere in the vicinity, um, we invite you to come be a part of what God is doing in our midst. It is, it's, there's something special that's happening. Um, and so with that said, I just want to say, daughter, is there anything else that you feel led to say? Any closing remarks before we close and end this broadcast? I just want to say to love people. Love people where they're at, but don't let them think that they are to remain there. It's mm. okay to be encouraging and loving. It doesn't have to always be something somebody wants to hear, but it, it'll probably be something that they need to hear. Mm. Well, you heard her. It has just been, today was awesome. I'm so proud of her. God is just so good. Um, we're, we're just going to close out. I pray, Father, for your families. I pray that God will bless your life. Every person that's sitting and listening to this, I pray for the blessing of the Lord to rest upon your life. And I pray that the deliverance that you experience will be permanent. I pray that in Jesus' name, that you would be drawn closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Every person that's watching, every person that has heard these words tonight, Lord Jesus, I ask you that each of them would receive a revelation of the love of the Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that even what we have discussed, that you would give every family wisdom, every parent who has a child that uh, is in that lifestyle. I ask you, Father, that you would give them wisdom, that you would navigate them, that you would guide them and show them how to minister to their son or minister to their daughter. Father, fill them with the love of God and help us all, help the church, help pastors and leaders that as people walk through the door that are lesbian, that are homosexual, God, that we release the heart of God to them and not our opinions, not our judgments, not our criticisms, but God help us to minister more effectively in the love of the Father. I pray for every pastor, I pray for every ministry that we would all see a revival of people that are, that are saved and brought to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So amen. we bless you guys and we thank you guys for being a part of this. If you haven't shared it, I believe somebody needs to hear it. So please like and share this broadcast so that many others can be blessed by all of the things that were discussed today. We love you guys. We'll see you next time.